Okay, I'm going to be talking about contrast enhanced ultrasound in the abdomen with specific attention to the liver and to its use in the liver and kidneys. Um, just by way of background, some basic principles about contrast agents in general. Um, the reason that we actually use contrast agents of various types, or of any type for that matter, is to change the property of a specific structure with regard to the surrounding tissue, such that it stands out better, or and in fact, we are able to see it at all. Um, one of the other important principles of contrast agents is the fact that they tend to increase the signal-to-noise ratio of the specific structure that we're looking to image. Uh, we do this using various um, compounds. Um, typically in x-ray or CT, we want to increase the density of the structure we'd like to see, in which case we often use iodinated or barium-filled um, compounds. Um, in MR, uh, we do this, we increase the signal-to-noise ratio by increasing the amount of magnetic signal, typically using some sort of iron-containing compound such as gadolinium. And with ultrasound, this is done by the use of air bubbles, uh, which also, of course, are very highly reflective. Now, air bubbles were used originally. At this point, we have more sophisticated contrast agents, so these are really micro bubbles of various types. Typically, at this point, uh, with the more modern agents, those would be using fluorocarbon bubbles, and we'll talk more about that later. Whenever you're going to inject a contrast agent, uh, of course, one should be thinking in terms of the amount of toxicity that it may cause versus, of course, the benefit that it provides with regard to imaging of the patient. Um, as I mentioned, there are various agents that have been used for many years in imaging uh, for outlining the hollow viscous, for example, the bowel. Typically, we use barium. Um, in CT, sometimes water can be a successful contrast agent, um, methyl cellulose, uh, or even bubbles to put gas into the area, for example, of the stomach. Um, when I think in terms of the use of contrast agents uh, with ultrasound, or for that matter with most other forms of cross-sectional imaging, um, I usually think in terms of intravascular um, injections, uh, and some of them will outline the macrovascular, the large vessels. For this, we would be thinking in terms of the prototype, say, of contrast classic contrast angiography. Um, in the last decade or so, we've taken that to other heights using it as MRA or CT angiography, or now with ultrasound contrast as well, we can see the large vessels enhancing nicely after injection of these microbubble contrast agents. Um, this can be uh, contrasted with what I call microvascular or parenchymal imaging, where the vessels themselves are not typically individually seen, but rather you have enhancement of the entirety, say, of an organ such as the liver or the kidney. Um, this has been done, again, for many years with uh, intravenous urography, uh, CT or MR, um, and, of course, ultrasound can do the same as well. Uh, do keep in mind that with CT and MR and the, I, with the contrast agents that are typically used with those forms of imaging, um, you do have a vascular and also um, an interstitial phase such that these contrast agents actually uh, will uh, diffuse out into the interstitium uh, outside of the blood vessels themselves. Remember that the ultrasound contrast agents, because they are microbubbles, are really pure blood pool, agent, pool agents. They do not actually um, get outside of the blood vessels themselves. Uh, one of the uh, advantages of ultrasound that is not enjoyed by CT or MR, of course, is the fact that ultrasound is a real-time imaging technique that provides a continuous display of the structures being evaluated uh, from the moment it's injected until the moment you stop scanning. Um, some basic physics about contrast ultrasound, as I mentioned earlier, gas or air of any kind is a strong sound reflector when it comes to the body because it's extremely diff different from the tissues of the body itself. So again, we're increasing the backscatter or the amount of signal going back to the transducer from areas that have high concentration of these micro bubbles. Um, thinking in terms of physics, the amount of reflectivity of a structure is directly proportional to the size of the scatterer, the density of the scatterer, and the compressibility, in this case, of the gas. Uh, do remember that if you put too much of a contrast agent into the patient, uh, it may reflect so much sound that you actually have degradation of the area behind it, uh, secondary to shadowing. 
Now, when would we use the, well, things that would make a contrast agent possible or one that you would want to use, first of all, it needs to be injected through an easy IV access site. Most of the time we inject these contrast agents through an arm vein, just an arm or hand vein, just as we would with IV contrast for CT or MR. Uh, remember that if you inject from an intravenous access site, that in order to see tumors for the most part and other structures that we're usually interested in, um, these agents have to pass through the pulmonary vasculature and into the systemic circulation. Uh, if we're actually going to be able to get adequate arterial or parenchymal imaging. Uh, for this reason, they must be small enough, the microbubbles must be small enough to pass through the spongy uh, filter that is the lung. Um, and having consistently small particle size, generally in the case of modern agents about the size of red blood cells, is absolutely essential. Um, remember, the agents must remain intact for a sufficient amount of time to be able to actually scan. Um, so in addition to using um, the microbubbles themselves, um, typically the more modern agents uh, use a stabilizing shell. Typically this will be consistent of lipid or some form of surfactant. Other compounds such as um, albumin uh, have been used as well. Um, as I mentioned, we are no longer using um, typical air bubbles uh, for our contrast agents. Most of the contrast agents that are currently in use uh, rely on perfluorocarbon gases. And the reason for this is that this type of gas is not soluble in blood, again, increasing the amount of time um, before it goes into solution and is no longer visible. Um, all this is aimed, of course, at providing a realistic amount of scan time um, so that you can actually see the imaging or see the structure that you want to image. And of course, you also don't want really too much because if it's a relatively short period of time, um, you can actually re-inject if you have any other questions or, for example, if you'd like to target a second or third lesion. Um, the major advantage, really, or one of the major advantages of most contrast agents that are currently in use, if, if really all of them, is the fact that these agents are not nephrotoxic. The gases break down um, in the bloodstream and they're simply excreted in the form of a gas through the lungs. And so this is a major advantage over um, iodinated contrast agents. And to date, millions of these scans have been performed around the world. And uh, again, there's no obvious evidence or no evidence to suggest that there may be a problem as occurred with MR contrast where uh, systemic sclerosis became uh, a possible complication of injecting these contrast agents. Um, although these are not approved in the United States for use outside of the heart, which is not a subject I want to go into, but hopefully will end soon and be more readily available or more readily usable in the United States, um, one can get reimbursed for these by most insurance uh, companies, and in fact there is even a specific code that we use, which is Q9957. Um, at this point, there have been a number of contrast agents on the market. Many of them have gone by the wayside. Um, the older ones, Albunex um, and Levovist, um, again, were micro air microbubbles, um, and they had albumin and galactose as their carriers to stabilizing. Um, Echogen was one of the first of the uh, perfluorocarbon gases uh, to be used as an agent, again, no longer available. Um, Optison and Definity are both available in the United States and are FDA approved for cardiac use only, although off-label use, again, is not a problem in my opinion um, in the United States if it's medically indicated. Optison, again, uses albumin. Uh, Definity uses a lipid surfactant uh, stabilizer or carrier. Probably the most widely used worldwide agent is Sonoview. Um, again, this is a sulfur hexafluoride compound using lipid and surfactant. Again, um, the idea of the sulfur hexafluoride, the fluoride compounds are not soluble in blood and therefore um, maintain stability of the agent. Um, another interesting agent is known as sonazoid. The interesting property of sonazoid is the fact that it provides the typical vascular phases of imaging that we need, but it is also taken up by the reticuloendothelial cells of the liver, 
um, and therefore uh, abnormal areas such as metastases, hepatocellular carcinoma, will be seen as holes or defect. It's very similar to the agent Eovist or actually very similar to the old style nuclear medicine tracers that showed masses in the liver as holes. Um, this agent at this point is available in Japan only. Uh, we were hoping there may be some trials beginning in the U.S., but unfortunately this does not seem to have occurred.